Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome back to the channel. I recently took the plunge and upgraded my sim racing wheel from a Thrustmaster TX to a direct drive system and today I wanted to give you my thoughts on how big a step up it's been, what the major differences are with a mid-market setup and whether ultimately I'd recommend making the switch to you. Now by necessity I'm basing my reflections on a specific direct drive system, the AccuForce V2. It provides 30 Newton meters peak torque and fantastic calibration software. Other systems will of course vary in terms of performance, cost and features. The other thing to be clear about is I have no affiliation or relationship with Sim Experience who make the wheelbase. Indeed I bought the wheelbase and a converted Fanatec rim on the second hand market. So what you're going to get in this video is my honest reflections and hopefully a helpful steer for you if you're thinking of upgrading. If you do enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like and get subscribed for more sim racing guides, racing and reviews. So when I sat down to make this video, I'll admit I wasn't entirely sure what was left to say about direct drive wheels. Every DD wheel review I've ever heard talked about the night and day difference between belt driven and direct driven wheels. The change in feel, the level of smoothness and detail that is communicated through the wheel and the immersive nature of the experience. And I'll be honest, when I previously heard those things, I never really knew what people were on about and I was a little bit skeptical that the difference could be all that big. But now that I've had over six weeks with a direct drive system myself, all of a sudden, those reviews make much more sense. In very simple terms, it feels fantastic. The problem is I'm still struggling to find a new or different way to articulate how and why it feels so good that doesn't just repeat the same platitudes that I'm sure 90% of you will have already heard. But nevertheless, here goes. Recreating the vast amounts of sensory information that real drivers in real cars depend upon when racing is for now at least impossible. But the more feedback and information you can get from the physics engine of the sim you're playing, the closer to that experience you can get. The vast majority of us will never own a motion rig, so we're almost entirely reliant on the wheel to transmit the forces going through our virtual cars to let us know levels of grip, slip and traction. Racing with a direct drive wheel provides so much more of this information than my previous wheel that it offers the sensation that the car is alive beneath you, that the track is full of imperfections, bumps and cambers, that the weight of the car is yours to control as you ride them and that it shifts naturally, progressively and in a way you can understand as you negotiate corners. And it does this not through wildly powerful forces, although you certainly can achieve that if that's what you want, but rather through the fine grained detail and smoothness of the feedback. The wheel is constantly communicating with you, giving you vast amounts more information about what your car is doing and not just providing varying levels of resistance when you turn it. I really liked my Thrustmaster TX wheel but truthfully, the experience of a direct drive wheel really is on a whole other level when it comes to driving feel and immersion. Racing with a direct drive wheel is, in my opinion, unlikely to make you much faster in and of itself. Practice is what makes you faster, regardless of whether you're using an entry-level Logitech wheel or a high-end SimuCube Pro. It's entirely possible, believe me, that people with much more humble setups than a direct drive will thrash you on the racetrack. So don't buy one of these with that as the primary aim. More likely, a direct drive wheelbase will make you more consistent, which will mean finishing the race with fewer mistakes and ultimately in less time. That's because you'll have a vast amount more information at your fingertips, literally at your fingertips, and this affords you a much more subtle and precise level of control over your virtual car. But for outright lap time improvements, upgrading your pedals is a much stronger bet. Secondly, getting the most from a direct drive setup can be a bit of a pain. These don't tend to be plug and play devices. You're going to want to dial in the force feedback offered by the wheel and potentially tailor it to the different sims that you run. You're going to need a sturdy rig to bolt it to, as well as a wheel rim to run it with. And that gets me onto the third note of caution, and there's no getting away from this. Direct drive wheels are expensive, even the budget options. Fanatec's new CSL DD range, which offers comparatively great value, 
will still set you back hundreds of pounds before you even think about the optional boost kit, wheel rim and pedals. And if you're outside of Fanatec's ecosystem, wheel rims can be really pricey. There are some gorgeous pieces of kit out there, but you could easily spend £500 on a rim alone. Bought new, my wheelbase and rim would have definitely set me back over £1,000. So having said all of that, should you look to upgrade in 2022? I love my direct drive wheel. It's given me an added level of immersion, significantly increases my enjoyment of all sim racing titles and takes my home setup one step closer to feeling like a proper simulator rather than a video game setup or a toy. But let's be clear, they are a premium luxury item and I also very much enjoyed my Thrustmaster TX. Ultimately, you can get into, enjoy and claim many victories in sim racing without a direct drive system. And being entirely honest, I've noticed next to zero improvement in my speed since I upgraded. As ever, whether you should upgrade comes down to context and your personal circumstances. If you're looking to get faster, I reckon the best place to start is upgrading your pedals, not your wheelbase. And if you don't have a spare 500 plus pounds to spend, then even on the second hand market, you're very unlikely to be able to find a direct drive wheel and rim for sale at a lower price point. And if you don't have a sturdy flex free rig to bolt it to already, then you'll likely need to factor in additional costs for that too. But if you do have the budget and you're clear for what you're hoping to get from it, then wow, a direct drive wheel can hugely enhance your sim racing experience putting you ever closer to that feeling of really being out on track, which at the end of the day is the feeling that I'm chasing when I go sim racing. So there you go, my honest reflections on whether it's worth upgrading to a direct drive system. I'm sure you'll all have your own perspectives and experiences with different wheelbases and I'd love to hear them in the comments. If you found the video helpful, do remember to leave a like, get subscribed and I will see you on the next one.